All right, guys, we're going to talk about what you need to do to be as successful as possible in your first jiu-jitsu competition, and I applaud you going into that arena. My name is Chris Matakis. I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt, a school owner. I've written 13 books about using jiu-jitsu as a vehicle for personal development, and today we're going to talk about the five things you can focus on to get the most out of your training to be ready for competition. So by the end of this video, you'll have a really good understanding of what you need to do and hopefully experience a big mitigation and stress with all the unknowns. So let's dive in. First up, it is not a weight loss competition. I think one of the biggest mistakes new competitors make is they get so caught up in wanting to weigh as little as possible and start playing this weight loss and water drain game where they end up being a inferior version of themselves in the moment of competition because they're so depleted. So my advice to our white belts is always don't worry about the weight classes wherever you are You'll reside fine. Weight classes are generally only like 10, 20 pounds anyway. So just be the best possible version of you and focus on the jujitsu and not cutting weight. And that seems to work very well for new competitors just starting out. Secondly, you want to start to create a game plan. So you want to have a vision of how in a perfect world is this going to go down. And I tend to create two game plans with our competitors a top game plan and a bottom game plan. So you get out there and you start to implement your top game. Can you work your takedowns? Can you get on top? Can you pass? Can you submit? And then if you reach a point where you feel like this individual's wrestling and takedowns are better than mine and I cannot take them down, then you implement your second game where you pull guard, work from all your off your back, work your special sweeps and submissions to try to win from there. So you want two game plans and you want to start to practice these game plans what you're going to try to do on top and what you're going to try to do on bottom. And then you use your training sessions as ways to implement your game. Now, it's not always going to go as planned. It's almost never going to go as planned. But having a game plan going in allows you to find some certainty amid the uncertainty of competition. And it's really useful to start to cultivate your go-to moves and techniques that you'll be able to use reliably in that moment of decision. Thirdly, start from the feet. So, Every tournament starts from the feet. Not a lot of jiu-jitsu schools start their matches from the feet. And what we see is a lot of times it's those new variables and new scrambles that we're not used to from the feet that get us stuck in really bad positions very early on in the match and we never recover. So you want to start to get experience and reps and starting from the feet. Whether you're wrestling or whether you're just pulling guard, get those reps in starting from the feet because you want your training to be as close to the competition as possible. And now align with that, our fourth one, your conditioning should reflect the match. So when we think about, oh, I want to get in shape for my jujitsu fight, a jujitsu match is very variable in the ups and downs, right? There's like a sprint and a lull, a sprint and a lull. So with our limitations and how much we can train and what styles of training we can do, when you train your cardio off the mat, a general good rule of thumb is the cardio should match the demand of the event. So since jiu-jitsu is very variable, so should your training be. This is where we do things like Tabata intervals, where you sprint for 20 seconds, go slow for 10. You start to create that sort of simulation of what's going to happen in your body. You can do that with circuits and strength training. You can do that with spring around a track. You can do that sprinting on a bike. The main thing is that your conditioning should be as variable as the event, which means it's going to be lots of starts and lots of stops, lots of high intensity exertion followed by a small period of rest. And you do that over and over for the duration of your match. So if you're a white belt, you've got five minute matches and you anticipate having three matches to win gold, I would train my conditioning so that I could do say four matches of five minutes of crazy variable intensity with five minutes off in between rounds because that's what my tournament's gonna look like. So we can see how the more closely we can make the conditioning compared to the event, the more likely we are to succeed in the event. And then the last part, remember it's only jujitsu. Like it's competition and it can feel so intense and it's all these unknowns. You go off into a big stadium, everyone's watching. When am I gonna get called? But at the end of the day, it's just jujitsu and you do jujitsu every day. And I think holding on to that and understanding that it's not that much different makes it much more palatable and makes the stress much more manageable. So I think these are the things we want to think about and gear our training towards when we're going to do our first competition. So in review, it's not a weight loss competition. Just be the best version of yourself. 
create a game plan, ideally one on top and one on bottom, so you feel confident no matter where you end up. Start from the feet in training, because that's how you start in a tournament. Your conditioning should reflect the demands of the event, so lots of variety in five, six minute rounds over time, getting three, four, five rounds in, so you feel confident that your body is capable of meeting the demand of the event. And then finally, remembering that at the end of the day, it's just jujitsu, you do jujitsu all the time, and it's not gonna be that much different. If you focus on these five things, competition in the beginning seems to go very well. So I wish you luck. Uh, I hope you have a fruitful experience, learn from the experience. There's a general saying, uh, one competition is worth 30 classes because it will bring to light your strengths and your weaknesses and allow you to inform your future curriculums based on that experience. So I wish you well, get after it, and thanks for your attention and time in watching this video. I hope I served you well, and if I did, Please like, comment, subscribe so we can stay connected and I can help you achieve your goals through YouTube. So all the best. Talk soon.